the word that she has with the devil. Look at it. You see, the serpent, it says it in the word, is the wisest. And so when he asked the question, he asked it in such a peculiar form that it sounded something like the truth. He says, the Lord told you that you can't eat of any tree in the garden. Here's how we know that Adam had not taught her what the real deal was, because she says, no, God told us that we could eat of every tree of the garden except for the one in the middle, because if we eat it, then we'll surely die. He says, God told you, you can't eat of any of the trees of the garden. And she responds, no, he says, we can eat of all of them except this one. She was not equipped, really, to have the conversation with the serpent. If we're going to be believers, if we're going to minister to people, if we're going to teach our children about the word, we need to prepare them to deal with the wisest of the wise of the serpents. We got to put the word in them so deep that when the serpent comes, they say, shut that foolish talk up. What do you mean? All of these trees out here and you're worried about that tree? I got fruit. I got apples. I got pears. I got bananas. I got yam. All you're worried about is this tree? If, 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 if he had taught her about the fruit. She would say, how silly are you? What are you asking me? This is a this question is beneath me. God gave me dominion over everything. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> yeah. That's my mother. All 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 week, all week she's been trying to figure out what the message was and so apparently she must have seen my notes. The final thing, and this is the crucial thing, uh, through, through, throughout the, uh, the theological debate that takes place about this scripture, everybody talks about how it's Adam's fault because he was not there, you know. But I, I would like to take that a step further. It wasn't so much that Adam was not physically there. It was that his presence was not there, though he was not present. You see, when I was a little kid, when I was younger, my mother and my father, even when they were not there in the back of my head, there was always this thing of. I, 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 even though I wanted to, even though I knew how much fun it would be. I, the, the, I, it was there. If I can share a testimony. Brother Art, we just met, and when we first met, he, uh, something happened, uh, he, he went through a situation, and he pulled me to the side, and he says, you know, when, when this situation happened, um, I was going to do what I used to do, but then I thought about you, and I asked, is this what he would do, and it pulled me back in line. You see, what Adam did not realize is that though he was not present, he still could have had a present. You, if, if, if you're going to minister to people, if you're going to reach out to people, if you're going to bring believers to Christ, if you're going to bring brothers and sisters to the word, you have to establish a presence even when you're not present. When you're not there, they should be thinking about the word that you shared. When they're going through hard times and you don't answer your phone, they should be able to reflect on the word that you shared with them. The word says it will not return void. So I promise if you just establish a present, even when you're not present, God will move. They'll be reminded. So if you're wondering, as a minister, as a witness, or as a parent, how you ended up in this naked state, because look at it, Adam, for all intents and purposes, should not have been naked, because he wasn't even there. 
Adam's nakedness was a vic- what, made what was as a result of him being victimized by what he failed to do. So while you think if your child is going through something, you're not going through something. While you think if other believers are going through something, you're not going through something. You're just as naked as they are. So if you want to get out of this naked state, make sure that your presence precedes you being present. Teach your children and other believers the truth in such a way that they can respond to the lies of the wisest and ask questions, inquire, and investigate everything that comes through your doorstep when it comes to say, hold on, wait, who are you? What are you talking about? Where'd you get it from? Who is this with you? Where are your friends going? What do they think? Do they know the Lord? If not, are you telling them about him? Just converse, inquire, investigate. But Adam did not do it all by himself. He had some help. There was someone that nudged him just a bit into nakedness. Gave him just a little. ah. If we can take a second to talk about the serpent. You see, there are a few things that if Adam and Eve had just been on their A game that they could have responded to quite quickly. The first thing, the serpent convinces Eve that it is necessary for her to know good and evil. And the words that are there, it is very good. And it was good. And it was good. And he made this. And it. The serpent tries to convince Eve that it is necessary for her to know good and evil. Why? I'm good. God created me as good. Why do I need to know something about something that has nothing to do with me? As believers... We've got to stop letting folks shape our worldview. We've got to stop letting other folk shape how we should think about other things, how we think about ourselves. As a matter of fact, we should just have such a godly state of mind that when folk come up trying to convince us, we say, no, that's silly of you. Why do I need to know about evil? God didn't put it in me. Why is it important? Hmm. The next thing. He convinces Eve that she has a need to be like God. If Eve had just, if Adam had just for a while talked to her about the fact That God made, the word says, in my image and in our likeness. Why do I need to be like God? I'm already in his image. I'm already in his likeness. As a matter of fact, I'm so much like God that he breathed his breath into me. That's how I got life. Why? Why do I need to be like God? I am of God. I am a child of God. I am a woman of God. I am a man of God. Why would I waste my time trying to be like God-ish? God-light. I'm created in his image. As a matter of fact, if we would spend more time trying to be godly instead of godlike, half of our issues would not be issues. You see, if we would stop being like God in people's lives, being godly in people's lives, we wouldn't have some of the challenges. If we would be godly, the folks we are trying to be godlike about would find Jesus. If our example was so godly that we had no need to be godlike, 
it wouldn't be empty altar call. And not because of pastor. I'm talking about the church. If, if it was a church full of godly folk, everybody that walked in here would want to know Jesus. If we were godly, everybody that came through here, everybody that heard a word would want to know Jesus. But instead, we'd be in God-like. Well, I tried to make this job happen, but it didn't happen. Trying to be God-like. I tried to make this relationship work, but it didn't work. Trying to be God-like. But if you were just godly, if you would just take a second to be in the likeness and the image of God, your walk would be such that those who didn't want to be near God would move out of your way. Your word would be so strong that those who wanted to seek God would be drawn to you. You see, the only folks who really want to stay away from you are the ones who know better and don't really have a desire to be around God. But for the people who are hurting, for the people who are struggling, but they really want to know God. If you just, I'm in the likeness and the image of God, they would be drawn to you. Yeah, I, they, they, you know, I've never heard anybody talk about Jesus that way before. You, 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 you know, uh, every time I see you, no matter what's going on, you've got a pep in your step. Even when times are hard, there's something about you that I just can't put my, I'm godly. I was made in his image and in his likeness. The next thing. If I can talk to my brothers and sisters who struggle with addiction. I praise God for you that he brought you out. You see, the serpent convinces Eve that she is in need of something externally that will bring her closer to God. He leads her to believe that all you need to do is take this little pill and you'll be like God. All you need to do is... And you'll be like God. All you. And you'll be like God. But if you wake up in your right and godly mind, you'll find out that that dope, that those pills, that that weed takes you so far away from God. That you wake up in the most God forsaken places with the most God forsaken people in the most God forsaken circumstances. But, 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 but. Who benefits from you being naked? Who told you were naked? The devil wants you to stay high. The enemy wants you to stay searching for your next hit. And what he does is when you take the first step over here, then you got to get high. Then you got to get higher. Then you got to, till you fall down flat on your back. That's the word. It's in the word. He's trying to convince her that if she just eats this fruit, that she'll be what she already is. We spend so much time chasing folk who can make us like God. That if we would just be godly, we wouldn't even have to chase nobody. Folk could be chasing us. How do we get to the word? Where is it that you're going? Where can we learn more about this Jesus fella? It's in the word. The enemy benefited. The devil, the serpent, the liar, the deceiver, he benefited. If you just take this peel. If you just take one more hit, I promise you'll be right where you need to be. Even the language, I'm high. God is on high. I'm lifted. My soul is lifted. Huh. The final thing, which I think is the most silly thing, is that the serpent finally convinces Eve that somehow God is afraid of what will happen to him if they eat this fruit. He tells him. He says it. It's in the word. I promise you. He says, God is afraid 